Here's another important video from the Personal Defense Network. All right, naturally, one of the first things I want to do when I get inside the car is put my seatbelt on. One is the law, and two, if I have to start taking evasive actions, the vehicle is going to start having a lot of massive weight transfer very quick. I do not want my body to become a part of that weight transfer. One of the best things, one of the best pieces of safety equipment you can have on your vehicle is you, the driver, securely fastened in front of the seat just behind the wheel and stay there. If you start taking these evasive actions, the last thing you want to start to have happening is for your body to become a part of that weight transfer. And now you're trying to make these evasive maneuvers while trying to hold on to the steering wheel, which is uh, not a good thing because you, need, you may need to add more steering and you may start flying up against the door into the passenger seat. Now, as we're talking about steering wheel management, naturally, I want to have two hands on, on the vehicle. We all see people driving around all the time, their seats laid back, they've got one hand barely on the top of the steering wheel. If they have this type of situation occur, they've got to start taking different steps than what a driver would if he had two hands on the wheel, body upright, ready to go at a moment's notice. If your seat's laid way back, then you now have to add extra steps into this equation where you have to first lean up, now you don't have a backrest to, to lean against, and you're going to have to start then putting two hands on the wheel, which is just putting you behind the power curve just that much more. So I want, to, I want to be in a position where I can have two hands on the steering wheel. That way, any amount of steering that I need to add into this steering wheel, I can begin to do that with two hands. Uh, another thing that I want to do is take my left foot, and I want to brace it up down here on the, on the firewall as much as I can. If I can brace myself up in the seat, I have just decreased the chances, of my, again, of my body becoming a part of the weight transfer. With the steering wheel management uh, technique that I'm using here, it, remember, if I hit this car in front of me, I may have left plenty of room, but if I hit the car in front of me while I'm trying to make this evasive maneuver, the airbag may deploy. If the airbag deploys, I do not want to have my thumbs wrapped inside of the steering ring. If I do that and that airbag deploys, I can pretty much guarantee that my thumbs are going to be injured, possibly broken. So I want to try to avoid that. If the airbag was to deploy, it would throw my hands free and clear. Then I could pull the bag back down. You're going to have a lot of chemicals in your face, but at least I can put my hands back on the steering wheel and continue to drive away. The, the second part of that is, is now all these things, what we call the chemical cocktail, have just entered my system, that big surge of adrenaline. And under that surge of adrenaline, one of, the, one of the, the biggest factors is sympathetic grip. And we all know that as it applies to firearms. That's why we don't walk around with our finger on the trigger. Same thing in driving. If you've got your thumbs wrapped inside the steering ring, once these stressors or once that adrenaline is introduced, then the first thing you want to do is start gripping on the wheel. Once you start getting the big muscles and that big grip on the wheel like that, it's hard to steer sometimes because your body wants to tense and stress up. So you need to re remain calm, relaxed, thumbs outside the steering ring, and then simply make the directional, uh, the directional change and then begin to accelerate in that direction. Uh, one of the other things that I want to do, now I've got my left foot still braced out on the firewall. I don't want to drive around all the time with my foot braced out on the firewall to where I'm now getting fatigue in my leg. I find a comfortable position to put it there. Uh, close to that to close to that firewall or close to any point down here that your foot can reach uh, because once the vehicle dynamics you know start to get the weight transfer uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm doing things like jumping the curbs or going through an intersection then I'm going to brace myself up so that my body doesn't become a part of that weight transfer with my other leg I'm simply indexing my heel and the floorboard a comfortable position in between the brake and the accelerator that way I'm able to just rotate the, the toes back and forth so that I can you know make any type of change I need to there as well all right now now that we've covered that uh, let's talk about mirrors and, and something that can help you with the situational awareness uh, around the entire vehicle, whether it be for other traffic or whether it be for other people on the side of the road. Some things that prevent uh, sometimes depending on what type of vehicle you're in, like an SUV or some type of larger vehicle, this A-pillar here may be a little bit bigger. So at times that can create a blind spot as you're sitting in an intersection or as you're driving down the road. That uh, setting my rear view mirror up so that I can see more than uh, just the back seats and just a little bit out of the glass. I want to make sure that I can get a full view out of the back glass or as much of a full view as I can with the rear view mirror that I have. And of course with the side mirrors I want to position them so that I can see there's really not a, a reason or a purpose for me to be able to see the side of the car. I position mine out so uh, they're just a little bit farther than what the side of the car is. I know where the side of the car is, but it just gives me this that much more angle that I can see uh, from the blind spot behind me. Okay, now we talked about the 
weight transfer that takes place inside the vehicle. And what I want everybody to realize is how important that is to the only thing from our car that's touching Mother Earth is our tires. Everything that we're asking the vehicle to do is going to be depending on the type of traction that we have with our tires. And one of the most critical points there is proper tire inflation. We all see driving down the road those tires that are underinflated. You'll see the bulge on the sidewalls. That's a clear indication of a, an underinflated tire. And if you're starting to take these evasive maneuvers, it's important that you have that proper tire inflation pressure because at that time is not the time for the rim to be digging in or you, for you to pop a bead or something uh, and have some type of mechanical failure due to lack of uh, proper tire inflation pressure. So I get into the habit every day as I walk out even into my driveway, I look at all four tires. I don't necessarily put the pressure gauge and check the tire pressure every day, but I usually do about once a month or if I see that there's some type of sidewall, uh, the bulge that's uh, coming out which is a clear indication of an uh, underinflated tire. What you want to try to achieve with your tires is you still want them to be pliable because like I said, jumping that curb or going into that pothole, you don't want to have them so, so tight that it's going to increase the chances of the tire popping. And you don't want to have them so underinflated that it's going to cause the rim to get dinged or pop, pop the bead of the tire. So what, what I would recommend is go with the, the manufacturer's suggested uh, inflation pressure, which can be found in several different places. Every car manufacturer has it on the website. You can find it in the owner's manual of the vehicle. You can find it a lot of times on the door frame, and you can find it a lot of times in places in the trunk. One of the things you don't want to do is go off the maximum inflation pressure, which is written on the sidewall. That maximum inflation pressure is based on this tire and, at, at a certain load. It, just as Rob was saying earlier, you know, care and maintenance of your firearm, same thing applies to the vehicle itself. If I've gone and taken the steps to have good situational awareness, allow that safe buffer or that safe wiggle room between me and the vehicle in front of me, preparing for a situation like this, then the last thing I want to do is find myself in that situation, have taken all the actions that I need to to assist me in evading this situation, and then have something like an underinflated tire cause me to bog down when I begin to accelerate away. Check out more videos just like this one at the Personal Defense Network.